Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Peter, and on this video, I'm going to show you how I photograph, edited, and remove reflections from this 68 Camaro and produce a studio quality image that I'm proud to share with you. So let's jump into this. So if you followed anything I do on this channel, you'll know that I frequently visit local car shows and I consider that to be my unlimited supply of classic cars, muscle cars, and even the odd exotic. And at those shows, I use my own bag of tips, tricks, hacks, and strategies in order to set up the pictures properly and get the best images to process them into studio quality photos posters, or even screensaver. So let's jump into this and I'll show you everything. So typically I'm shooting on a tripod and I'm using a circular polarizer. I've said this countless times. If you want to photograph cars and you don't have a circular polarizer, go home because you're wasting your time. Now the base images that I started with, this became the one that I would call the base plate, but there were a few other variations of that. That image here, just a change in the circular polarizer changes some of the highlights and reflections in the rear end of the vehicle. Likewise on this image here and even on this one here. And whatever photographing cars, I always add at least one image that is one or two stops overexposed. And I'll show you all that, the reason why and how I use it once we get into Photoshop. Starting with the best three images that were able to give me solid color and show the highlights that I wanted, I simply grabbed those images and do an edit in, and I'm sure to always select open as layers in Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop, and I've already done the auto align to make sure all three images are lined up. Even though they're on a tripod, I find that the simple action of changing the polarizer makes the images go out of sync just ever so slightly, but it's usually fixed by Photoshop. So here we start with the next image, that is providing a little bit of the highlight. Now, if I remove this mask here, you'll see what the entire image was, but I only brought in certain highlights that I wanted to show in this final image. And the third image that I brought in is the one that is overexposed. Now, I'm gonna show a couple of things here. And on the first image, let's remove this one for now. On the first image, you'll notice here that I'm only at a 65% opacity. And likewise, on the second image, which I'll show you the entire image here, that is certainly overexposed. But I, in talking to the car owner, I understood that this was a frame off restoration and I wanted to be sure that I could show everything underneath the car and hence that's why it was shot from this end. If any part of this video helps you with your photography or your Photoshop editing, would it be a bad idea to go below and hit the like button. Thank you. I do appreciate it. And that way I know this is the type of content that you want to see more of. So that became the start. And again, this is only in at 64% opacity because I'm just trying to highlight the tires and the undercarriage of the vehicle. My next step is typically to do what I call a guide. And all I've done here is gone through the image step by step looking for all the little blems that need to be fixed. Obviously, the uh, parking lot street lights were on and they're reflecting. Uh, there's even a little bit of dirt on the vehicle. There's a couple of things in the reflections on the bumpers and of course the license plate. So all these things, this guide becomes a way for me to double check back at the end to be sure that I've covered off all the blems or imperfections that I see. Because remember, my focus, whenever I'm photographing cars at car shows, is to be able to produce an image that is as clean as what the vehicle manufacturer would show you if they were trying to get you to buy the car. So having that guide is a great reference, and I do that every time. So we'll just turn that guide off for now, and let's get down to work. The other thing I frequently do is remove the uh, license plate. So here, I'm going to show you, I start with, there's typically three different layers in removing the license plate. Layer number one is just painting out the uh, existing numbers or letters on the license plate. Number two is using a license plate font and adding in a new plate. In this particular case, I added the 68 for the model year and the Z28. And of course, third, there's always a highlight. And for that highlight, I just look at what the actual original plate looked like 
and I attempt to duplicate that same sort of highlight and add back in the layer where I've obliterated the original plate. So that's pretty simple. The next step I go through is look at some of the blends and I'll flip this on and off. There were a couple that if you remember from my guide, this particular part of the reflection needed to be fixed. And of course there were reflections of lights from the parking lot lights that I really have no control over. So I'm just sure that I go through the vehicle and get all of them. Another sort of aside is I am usually pretty particular about capturing good reflections. And I just wanted to point out in this area of the photo, this is the reflection of this part of the bumper. And I kept that in. There was no reason to remove it. It's a natural reflection. And the other part was to remove this bit of a bad reflection. And we did that in on a separate layer. I typically work on various layers so that if I make an error, I can just not use or delete that part. Anyways, there we are. Then using the control alt shift and the letter E, I flatten the image and this image becomes the final part that I use in order to build the rest of the photo. And at this point, you have to start with the pen tool and I start by going around the vehicle and doing a complete and very precise cutout of the vehicle. First thing that you got to start with doing an outline of the car. So I'm going to start that. I know you probably don't want to watch me do this. I'll do it and I'll speed up the video. So this layer becomes the composite of everything below it with all the blends fixed and the license plate actually changed. I then use the selection of the outline of the vehicle, which is right there, and using the control J, I put that image on its own separate layer. So now what I'm going to do is follow through and replace the ground in the background. And that's all going to start with using a ground layer. And how do I replace the ground of this image? Well, typically I've already done this and I highly recommend you do similar. I go out and actually take photos of parking lot pavement that is clean or that I can edit to be fairly clean. Now, this is just an example and you can see that these are done at different levels so that I can put the perspective into the photo that I'm working on. In the particular image that I'm working on now, I used a variation of different images. Now, yes, there are some parking lot cracks, pavement cracks and lines that I typically take the ones I really need and edit them out. So I'll show you all that right now. So I started with that image and this is placed in the layer below the car. And on that image, there is a part that has been fixed already using simple patch tools or clone stamps in order to fix the actual pavement. And I'll show it there. Not a huge deal, but I just want to use clean pavement that doesn't have a bunch of oil stains on it or a bunch of cigarette butts that I got to sweep away or Photoshop out. So that ground becomes part of my image. Now, as far as the background is concerned, finishing this off, I typically go to a solid color and this is nothing more than an image that has a mask applied to it and there's the mask. So nothing, you know, earth shattering here, pretty basic Photoshop skills. On top of that, I had to build the shadows for the vehicle and that is done a couple of different ways. And I take a lot of care in duplicating the shadows because shadows really vary and those this is done in three different layers and it becomes a very difficult part of the photo editing and that's particularly why I don't do a lot of edits putting the car in another scene because I find I'm working on the scene 
more than on the vehicle, and the vehicle is actually the star of the show. So that became the shadows that were used. And on top of that, in order to provide some separation between the background and the vehicle, I applied a circular area with a heavy Gaussian blur and just faded that in at about a 40% opacity. So if I increase the opacity here, you'll see what it really started out like, but it was just in at a 40% opacity. And these numbers are not particular to everything that you do. This is all to according to your taste. So this is the way this actually ended out. And then on top of that, there was some smoke that was added. Now, I typically don't use some of the brushes that a lot of the other fellows are using. I don't get the consistency that I'm looking for. So I use a bunch of overlays that are I purchased as from Atmos. There are a series of overlays that give me clouds or different uh, light rays or different things or even highlights, glows or lens flares. So that's where these other parts come into this. And I'll show you specifically here uh, turn off all these layers and the layers start and I say layers because the effects become much better when they're layered one on top of each other. So these overlays are just added here to uh, obviously they're in the image behind the vehicle and they're done just to separate the vehicle and put a little bit of well should we say atmosphere in behind the vehicle. The other little fixes that were done was here on this rear window. Obviously on this section of the vehicle, I just used the pen tool and applied a mask. I'll see if I can come up with that selection. And that selection was a windshield cutout, I believe it was called, and there's the image. So I simply used a mask and cut that out. So obviously the section from the original photograph that was there is now cut out and I'm looking through to the background that I have applied. The only other issue was, of course, we had a difference of color here. So I applied this layer, obviously here, very light at a 71% opacity. And I added to that this bit of highlight to give a little bit of realism to the front window being there. So again, that's all, you know, that's all subjective to what you want to do and how you see things. On top of that, I typically add things, and this is uh, just images that I find on the internet uh, of the logos for Camaro. I try to find images that match the actual logos that are on the vehicle, and of course the Z28, and I'm pretty big on adding the model year, so it's really quick and easy. And on top of that, I frequently add different images looking at the different sections of the car or the highlights, whether it be a headlight, a taillight. And this particular one was rather important. I knew that from talking with the car owner, the Harvey's 401 and Jane, home of the hot ones, was a sticker that was around when this vehicle was popular, late 60s and early 70s. And he was proud of having a, that original sticker along with the Hearst sticker. So this all became part of it. And if I have a real quick look here and bring the guide back in, you'll see that the bunch of things that were done and completed. I did not change the reflection here. It wasn't a matter of trying to play with it. It didn't seem to be important enough. I just wanted to keep the correct color so that anybody looking at this would just understand that's a reflection. I don't think you had to try to read it. Obviously, I went and changed all, fixed all these other reflections, this one here, and even throughout the vehicle, got through all of that. So that's all the steps that I took in order to take these car show photographs and process them into a final image, what I would call a studio quality poster. And before you leave, go ahead and check out this video, which is a video that I detail step by step how I create what I call the easiest photograph for cars. And that is the typical studio shot or this video here, which is what YouTube says you probably want to see next. Until the next time, thank you so much for taking your time out of your day, and I appreciate it. Take care. Talk to you soon.